What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Industrial Craft 2. Now today guys, we're going to be messing around with the biomass and biogas power generation setup that is currently sitting right down here. So we worked on this in episode 6 and that was a really long time ago, believe it or not. Uh, and this was essentially just made to increase the power generation that I was getting from this cactus farm. So instead of just putting cacti into a generator, we were instead going to turn them into biomass, which then gets turned into biogas, powers the whole system, and then whatever's left is going to uh, create more biogas in the fermenter, and then whatever's left after that is going to get turned into power. So the setup works actually really well, and it was generating more than enough power for us at the time, but now that we're getting into more heavy duty machinery and we're getting nuclear power and all that and generating UU matter, we do need a little bit more from this setup. And that's actually relatively easy to do. So what we're gonna be doing today is turning this setup right here, which I would consider to be one layer into a multi-layered system that I can pretty much just layer on top of itself all the way down to bedrock and all the way up to the build limit. Uh, I can do as much as I want of it and it's actually relatively cheap. And what this will do is it'll allow us to get rid of the current backup that we have. So right here in this macerator, we've got a ton of cactus, a ton of bio chaff, and then this is uh, getting backed up right here because we cannot use enough of the biomass because the fermenter is going really slowly. So uh, there's really no way around this with the fermenter. So what has to be done is uh, we have to create more layers where we have more fermenters and then those are going to be producing more of the biogas, consuming more of the biomass and it'll kind of break up this whole uh, backup right over here. And you can see that we're getting tons of cactus backup. I think if we come up here and look over, we'll see that there actually is, yeah, there's tons of cactus sitting there. I've been grabbing stuff out of here and making it into scrap in the recycler. So uh, this is kind of a problem that I need to take care of, but uh, it's relatively easy to do, like I said. So this stuff is gonna all be scrapped. I'm gonna take it out with the uh, electric wrench in a little bit. I'm gonna do that off camera, but I wanted to show you guys what it looks like right now. And now we can come up here to the chest of stuff we're gonna be working with. So this is all the stuff we're gonna be working with. I'm not gonna be doing any crafting today because if you wanna go back and see the original idea, I'm pretty sure I do all the crafting of these machines there, like the fluid distributors, the semi-fluid generators and all that. But I wanna make sure that we have enough time to get through what we need to today. So essentially, this is going to be what the whole layer is going to look like outside of the initial layer which is going to have the pump and the macerator and all that on it uh, I'm only gonna have those on the top layer because we don't need that many we're not gonna need one of those setups per layer um, but the idea is going to be that each layer is going to use one semi fluid generator here one semi fluid generator here so two in total a fluid distributor here and one here so two in total and then a fermenter and a fluid heat generator one per and I believe we need three fluid ejector upgrades per layer so that's each layer um, not including, like I said, the macerator and the pump and the uh, fluid solid canning machine, but I will cover that once we go down and demolish all that stuff. I'm going to be using insulated gold cables as far as I'm aware because I want to make sure that we can transport enough EU per tick. And uh, don't mind these right up here. I made a little bit extra just because uh, I thought I might need those when I was still making the setup, but it turned out I didn't. So uh, what I'm going to do is hop off camera right now and man, I have not gotten used to those pants yet. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna hop off camera, I'm gonna demolish this, and I'm gonna clear out a little bit of space so we can work with it, because I do need to orient this in a different way. So keep in mind, when you're in your world, you might wanna have a little bit of open space for this, because the orientation does matter, uh, based on mainly the fluid distributors. So, uh, I need to make sure that my system is going to start over in the north side and work its way towards the south side. That might not make sense now, but it will once we are done. So, I'm gonna clear this stuff up, and ooh, ominous thunder. Um, I'm going to clear this up, hopefully the storm will pass, and then we will be back to start working on the layered setup. Okay guys, so we are back. I don't know if the storm is still going on, hopefully it is not, but I've cleared out the space down here. Looks like the storm is still going on, um, but I've cleared out some space down here. I went and made a couple more hoppers because we are going to possibly need to transport all these different cactus over to a little bit of a different area, which would be more in this vicinity over here. But I've cleared out a lot of the fluid distributors, a lot of the just kind of items that we are going to have that are just laying around are in here. And most of the machines, I guess you would say, are in my inventory. And for some reason, these don't want to stack, even though they have the same exact item ID, but whatever. So now we got to come upstairs and actually grab the stuff out of here. So... Let's get it out of there. The main reason I had it in there was just to kind of show how it's going to be set up and how much you're going to need per layer. But 
Uh, you should be able to see that when I'm setting it up down here. Now, keep in mind, I've set this up in a creative world, semi set it up. I haven't set it up with a macerator, pump, fluid, solid canning machine. Haven't done any of that yet. So it is going to take a little bit for me to kind of get my bearings and figure out what we're going to be doing here. So I hope you guys will, you know, bear with me while I'm doing this. Uh, so what we need to do is first set up the macerator and I'm going to kind of go over stuff in case you haven't seen the initial video and you're coming to this one because it's, you know, the optimized setup one. So essentially the idea is we have cactus and before I should have actually slept while I was up there, but whatever. Um, so we have cactus and the uses of cactus before we had just put it into, uh, I guess you can't see it here, but we put it into a generator and it would generate a very small amount of EU. I think it was like 20 per and right now we can actually turn eight of that into one bio chaff. And I did all the math out. So hopefully you'll trust me on this, but bio chaff can then be used to, uh, combine in a fluid solid canning machine. This one's just a fluid, but you can use it in a fluid solid one without the fluid cells, uh, to make water into biomass, combining it with the bio chaff. And the biomass is then put into a fermenter, which is heated with more biogas. And uh, I am going to have to go off camera and do the whole process again where I jumpstart it, but that is fine. I have some canisters of biogas upstairs that I can go grab later um, and let that run off camera for a little bit. But uh, essentially it makes biomass and then the biomass is turned into biogas in the fermenter and then the biogas powers the whole system. And then you have the extra biogas after the system is powered goes to uh, the fluid heat heat generator and that powers the fermenter to keep that running and then there's still excess after that which then gives us extra power that's just going to go into our mfsu so uh that's why we have all this cactus here it's backed up a lot so you know we're getting a lot of cactus per minute and it's just going it's wasted up there um so that is the goal of today is to use that so now that i've covered all that we're going to start out with the macerator i believe we can probably put it honestly like right here um, just to make sure we have enough room. So the macerator is going to go right here and now we got to move these hoppers all the way over. So they're inputting into the macerator. So, uh, this one is going to have to be altered right here, but I want to leave this space open down there. Actually, do I want to do that? We could use one, two, three, four. Okay. We do have enough for this. So we're essentially just going to go like this because I want to make sure that I can still walk around down here. So like that, like that. And then we just got to break this puppy right here drop a lot of cactus, which are going to end up partially in there. And then we got to put that down right there. So this should be depositing everything slowly into here. Let's get these in here before the whole system gets screwed up. So we've got this right here. And another thing to keep in mind is we do have to run power to these eventually, but I will get to that sooner or later. So we've got these and now they're running to the macerator, which is going to make all the bio chaff we need. Then we are going to have the fluid solid canning machine, which is going to be going, I believe we can put it right, right here. I want to say we can put it right here. Uh, these hoppers may need to get adjusted a little bit just because of how this is being set up. I might need a little bit more room like right there, but we're going to have the fluid solid canning machine right here. And this is going to have a pulling upgrade to pull from the macerator. And there was an initial reason I did this, not an ejector upgrade, is because when this got full and there was an opening here, it would eject the bio chaff back into this, and then it would eat it up and it would like do nothing or it'd back up the system, some, something weird like that. So I put a pulling upgrade in here before I knew that you could actually set the ejector upgrades to a certain side, which we're actually going to be using today. Um, but pulling upgrade in this one is the same. It's, it's super easy. And then we are going to change this one to, I believe it's this. So... I want to say it's this fluid and rich. I think, I think that should be it. Yeah. I think it's fluid and rich. Yeah. So the bio is going to go here and then the two fluids are going to be in here and we're not actually using anything up there. So we're going to have that. And then we're going to need to put the pump right next to this and it's going to have the fluid ejector upgrade. So we're going to put the pump right there and then we got to take the electric wrench and we got to get up here and flip it so that that pump is facing down. So it should be facing should be facing down and then we're going to break these blocks right here and this is where the fluid is going to go so one thing right now is that we have to put blocks right here and right here eventually if we do have uh other machines here i'm not exactly sure if we will but if we do have machines there then those will hold the water in nothing should be going in these four blocks so we don't need to really worry about that 
And if this was an issue, I could just kind of shift this back here and then the pump could go right here and the water could be under all this. But I don't think it'll be an issue. If it is, we can move it. But like I said, again, I don't think it'll be an issue. So we dump the water in here and we're gonna set it up like this just so that we don't have to worry about it sucking stuff up too much. And uh, it might get a little iffy when we're trying to run power to this. The power might end up coming up here and then over and powering this and this through like this block right here just because of the water but we'll have to finagle that once we get the rest of the system set up so we now have that and this whole system right here uh, needs the fluid ejector upgrade right in here now I'm actually going to set this one so it outputs to the correct side on the off chance that we have something right here that could accept the fluid so if we wanted to eject to this side we're gonna come over here and we're gonna shift right click and then we can look and it's gonna say automatically output to the west side which will output it to this side. So it's weird, you have to kind of click on the opposite side, but that should get it going correctly. Then what we're gonna do is actually start taking stuff out. So this has the pulling upgrade, it's also going to need a fluid ejector upgrade. And I think we should be okay with just putting a regular fluid ejector upgrade in here without setting it to anything, but we are going to want it to eject to this side, I believe, so we might change that up a little bit later. But now that we have that, this is going to have to go to, and I, I do have a picture on my phone actually, uh, this is going to go to a fluid distributor. Now the reason for this is we didn't do this in the last one. This was just automatically outputting into a fermenter. And the reason behind this was because we only needed one fermenter. But this is going to allow us to chain these down to a bunch of different fermenters. So essentially, we're going to put the fluid distributor right here. And we're going to flip it. So now the blue side is over here. And the fluid distributors kind of distribute in an odd manner. I want to say it's west which is this direction first, then they distribute east, then they distribute, uh, I I wanna say up, then down, then uh, north, then south, I think, but I'm not exactly sure, you can look on the wiki page for the specifics of it, but uh, essentially we're gonna have it here, and we're gonna have ones below it too, so we're gonna, st I guess we can start layering this right now, I don't know why I just broke that, what is, why is it like, why is this being super weird? Is something like sucking this up? Huh. I really hope nothing was sucking that up while I was while I was flipping out down there. That was that was super weird though. I have no idea. Um was anything absorbing that while I was I don't think anything was. That was that was weird. Um I don't know how to explain that, but Okay, so the fluid distributor is going to distribute down. I didn't actually need to get rid of that block for some reason I did, but it's going to distribute down and then I'm just going to go down below this to shift it up so it should be accepting down now and it's okay that it's going to distribute down first that is perfectly fine then what we're going to do and I got to look at the picture on my phone again because I'm not exactly sure about how I want to do this but um okay so I'm looking at it facing this direction <laughs> this is how I typically do this stuff okay so in front of this to the side of this actually we're going to want to have the fermenter, which is right here, I believe, right? So this would be the fluid solid canning machine. These would distribute to the fermenters right here. And then, hmm. Okay, so my design might have gotten a little bit screwed up, but that's okay. So the fermenter is going to go right here. And I, I hope this works. I'm trying to troubleshoot this on camera now. So the fermenter is going to go right here. And this is going to be accepting the fluid solid canning machine's biomass. Actually, no, we want the fermenter to go next to this one, right? Biomass goes in there. Yeah, okay, so we want it next to this one. So let's pop that off. So this is going to be outputting biomass. And then we can have another fermenter down here. So these are both going to be getting it. And this is going to output to these sides first so it's going to make sure this one is full and then it's going to drop down and it's going to do the other one um and then the next one's going to fill up and that's because this goes a lot faster than these actually process because these process like 10 millibuckets at a time this one can do a full bucket i think so that's why this one backs up so much so then we need to take and hook up these uh fluid heat generators and you want to make sure that these have these two uh, let me show you guys. So these both have these kind of coils on them, and that's how the heat transferred. So they need to be adjacent to each other, and you need to make sure that they line up. So to do that, you're just going to place it down like this, and place it down like that, and then you're going to shift-click, and shift-click, and it should flip them. This should be the side that you see, and it's emitting nothing right now. But essentially, 
this fermenter is going to uh, this fermenter is going to be powered by these, huh? Okay, so I do think I actually need to move these or move these hoppers a little bit because these can't go right here. This is where these are going to output to. So I do think we need to move. We're gonna have to grab these. Gonna have to recharge this real quick. This is a little weird, um, but okay. So we're gonna break this right here. So many cactus, cacti, cac something. Uh, so this is gonna go right here. And then this, oh, we gotta break this one too. Darn it, okay, so that's gonna go right there. And we gotta refill this with cactus really quick and make sure it drains. Refill this, get this stuff all out of my inventory. Drain into there, drain into there. Okay, so we got that. So the fermenter, we got down. So these fluid heat generators actually do need to go over here. And then we gotta break this. I think this is gonna make outside. No, it's not, okay. So they're actually already in the right direction, cool. So this is the fermenter. These are the fluid heat generators. So this is how the setup should be. And then we're gonna take fluid ejectors and we're gonna make it so the fermenter is gonna do two things. It's going to eject to the side that we are standing at right now. And this actually needs to get flipped. I forgot about that. So how's the best way to flip this? We're gonna break these. Oh man, okay, so we just broke one accidentally. That's fine, we got a lot of fluid distributors. We're not gonna do that again. I needed to wrench that. We're gonna wrench these and then we're gonna flip those so that they're facing the correct direction. So these should be facing each other now. And then we're going to place the fluid distributors back down and we're not going to screw it up this time. So we're going to place this down and then we're going to flip it. And then we're going to place this one down again. And there might be a better way to place these without having to like go under them to flip them up correctly. But we're going to flip that. <laughs> it's a little annoying. It'd be really easy to just set up one layer, but trying to set up two to prove that it can be layered is a little bit harder. Okay. So now that we got that going, these should now distribute into these. And then these over here, we're going to take the fluid ejector and we want it to eject to the uh, west side. So we're going to click shift click over here. And now these are all going to automatically output to the west side. So we're going to put these in there, one in each, like so. And these are now going to automatically eject to the fluid heat generators. So they're going to fill these up and they're going to keep them full. And these are going to power these. So it's just going to be an endless cycle of looping in here, but there will be extra. It's going to fill up. It doesn't need all of the biomass or biogas that it's producing to repower itself. So the excess is going to be coming out over here. And I need to figure out how I'm orienting these. Uh, it is going to be attached to each one. So this one is going to be attached to this one. And this one's going to be attached to that one. So that should be the correct side. And then we do need to, oh, I need to wrench this one completely because I do need to put in regular fluid ejector upgrades so that they eject to this side right here too. So we're gonna set it so it ejects to this side, which means we gotta do this, and this will make it eject to the south side, which is this direction. So this one is going to have another one that's ejecting to the south side, and this right here, so it's ejecting to this side properly. Now I could just do um, ejecting, I could do one of these, I think, and have it eject to the correct side. Um, yeah, I guess I really could do that, but, huh. Could I just have one that ejects to all sides automatically? I'm not sure. I feel like this might affect the order. Like if I put this one in first and then this one, so it ejects to the west side first and then this side, but I'm not sure. So maybe we'll take these out and we'll actually try it just with one regular one in there to try and save a little bit of cost. So we're gonna, what is it again to shift to edit these? Is it just like right clicking on something? Yeah, okay, so there we go. So that is first valid side and first valid side. So hopefully these are able to eject to that side. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know if these obey the same properties as, as the uh, fluid distributors, which is what I'm, I'm curious about. Because if they do, then there'll be no issue in this. But you don't know. We're, we're going to go back. I just... I just I screwed that up, not really. But essentially, we're going to put these back in like this. And the reason behind this is because... I need to make sure that it's ejecting to this. It needs to be ejecting to these right over here. If it's not ejecting to these, then we're screwed. So that's why now we're gonna have it ejecting to this side. So we're gonna click down here, put these in like this. And you don't know, no, we're not gonna do this. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that and we're gonna have regular ejection. So they're gonna have one that forces it to the west side and then a regular eject just to make sure. If you guys can tell me, or if I notice that this doesn't need this west one, then we'll take it out. But for now, just to be safe, we're doing that. And then this one right here, we're going to place this back down again, and we're going to wrench it back like that. So now we have all these set up, and this is going to be getting uh, 
biogas in it. And now what we need to do is hook up more power to this. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is, I believe we're gonna to wanna to put the power right over here. So because they eject to west and then east, nothing is gonna be over here, so they're not gonna try and eject there. So they're gonna try and eject over here. And this is where we are going to put our semi-fluid generators. So this is the first set of semi-fluid generators. I think these can be oriented in any way. And it doesn't matter that we have these fluid distributors over here, these get biomass in them, not biogas, and that's fine because biomass cannot be put in the semi-fluid generator. So these are gonna generate power and that is going to be brought back up. And I'm actually gonna use gold for this. This is gonna be brought back up. Uh, so we're gonna put power here and this is what's going to power these machines over here. So it's a little bit awkward with how I'm gonna have to run the power to them. Uh, just because of how this setup works. I guess if I were able, if I was able to move this back a little bit, that would be better, this right here. But we already got this setup going, so it is a little weird how I'm gonna wire this, but we can wire it like this and it should be fine. So wire it like that. And does this need power? Oh, this needs power, right, right, right. So this will be fine, this wiring is actually really good. So that's how we're gonna wire it like this. It doesn't look great and we don't have as much moving room in here, but when I clean it up a little bit, it'll look nicer. So that's gonna power itself, make sure all these systems have power. And then once that's full, these are all gonna fill up and then it's going to eject to the semi-fluid generator that is going to be right here. Now this semi-fluid generator is gonna be the one that actually gets us power. So uh, this one is going to be wired just going over in this direction, but I gotta wire it a little bit differently because of how uh, the wiring is over here. So I think what we're gonna do right now is just send a wire right down here because we only have two and wire it like this. Now, you might notice that we have a fluid distributor right here and it's got biogas in it. The reason for that, if you don't know, is because we have a blast furnace set up and all that, which needs a fluid heat generator, which was using our excess biogas. I will hook that up eventually to this system, but I don't know exactly how I wanna do it yet. Um, I might have it pull, like I might drop this down uh, and once I have a couple like extra layers on this, I'll end up hooking that up. But for now, it would make it annoying to hook up with this whole system. So what I think I need to do is now hop off camera and just kind of put in the biogas fluid cells into these and let them, I guess, kind of jumpstart the system. So I need to get some power in these, which are use biogas, get some biogas in these, and just kind of get the whole system running because the system, like I've said before, works on backup. So... Uh, pretty much, once this whole system gets backed up, it starts actually functioning properly. Um, but I'll explain why, I guess, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but essentially, once these start filling up with biogas, it works a lot better and can start generating power, but it takes a little bit to fill up the buffers first. Um, so I'm gonna go do that off camera and then we can jump back and verify that the whole system is good and running. Okay guys, so we are back and the whole system is running. It's not fully backed up yet, so you're not gonna be able to see it at full capacity, but everything is working properly, which is honestly the greatest feeling when stuff actually works properly when you test it out. Uh, it is a little weird to be around sound-wise because you can see that these are only generating power like every so often. Uh, so they're kicking on and off repeatedly, but uh, to power this whole thing, I used up 40 universal fluid cells. Uh, not too bad. I filled these up completely with ones that I had and I filled this up too. And you can see that right now the fermenters are running and they are both full of biomass right here and right here. Uh, also, side note, these do generate uh, fertilizer. They get you a very small amount. This is what I've gotten so far, but with a lot more running, it will be a lot better. Um, now, the reason we're not getting a ton of power from this right now, uh, we are getting a little bit, but we're not getting a ton is because the macerator is running. So this eventually will get backed up in here and it'll start building up biochaff. Uh, which is great and this one is you can see getting backed up with biomass which is great and then this one will stop running so i'm slowly trying to get this bio chaff in there just like shift clicking it in there so that uh it doesn't actually take stuff out of here but uh the whole idea is that this will eventually stop running uh, a ton and it will stop using up so much power and then eventually that'll make the macerator stop running so much I guess I, I just can't click those in there, but whatever. Um, so that'll stop running and it'll stop using so much power, which will prevent these from running and it'll allow more excess to fill up these. So you can see we are getting some power over here, but uh, it is going to take some time for that to happen um, because yeah, these need to start using up less of the biogas. But when that time does come, uh, we will get to see the full capacity. I actually think we'll get to see it relatively soon because this should not be able to produce any more for the time being. Uh, so that just means that the macerator needs to get backed up and then these will pretty much be able to stop running for the most part. Um, 
So yeah, we are getting a little bit more power generation coming in here. Um, but this is how this whole system can be layered, and essentially, I'm just going to need to uh, continue putting all like the fluid distributors down. None of these blocks have to go down. Um, for the time being at least eventually we might need to create a couple more of these stations But you definitely don't need more than one of these every like three or four layers and then uh, You're just gonna send this wire all the way down send this wire all the way down and it should be good So I'll be interested to see how this continues functioning and hopefully next episode We will uh, we'll be able to see this at full capacity, but that is going to be it for today guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did find it entertaining or helpful in any way feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot and one thing I want to say before I go typically that's right what I say before I say you know I'll talk to you guys later but um, I saved this for the end a couple of people commented and they were curious about uh, so, so I think someone specifically asked how school was going and people you know were saying good stuff about my exam but uh, school is going great um, I have like a 3.1 or 3.2 GPA in chemical engineering, um, which I wouldn't consider to be the best GPA, but uh, for chemical engineering, it's it's not always the easiest classes. Um, the chem exam I just took, I have not gotten my grade back on yet, but I heard the average uh, for the entire course, and my school is very big, there's like over 30,000 people that go here to uh, UConn, but uh, there's a lot of people in the chem department, and the average for this exam across all the classes was between an 80 and a 90 out of 150, which is, is like a 50 to a 60, so it's an F, um, the average. Uh, I felt pretty good about it, and I have a really good average in chem. I do great in that class, so I'm happy to, uh, to hear that we'll be getting a curve on that, but uh, we'll see how I did. I'll let you guys know, keep you posted, but things are going great. A little stressful, finals week is coming up, so I might not have videos out as frequently. Uh, between the 2nd and the 7th is finals week, and I am done on the 6th by 10 in the morning, so I will be back in my hometown by 12, and hopefully producing videos the next day, but... That is it. That's the recap for my life. If you guys cared to stick around to listen to me ramble about that. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed my whatever life ramble. And I will talk to you guys later.